What is Labor's response to that so far, this plan to increase our troops by about 20,000 over the next 20 years? Morning, Pete, and thanks for having me on. Uh, look, I think we approach these issues uh, with the spirit of bipartisanship. Um, obviously, we're not in government, so we haven't been briefed on this announcement, but uh, I imagine it's following advice about what our capability needs are on the ground with, with troops. Um, I think the issue, again, for us is... Um, you know, the government's pretty big on announcements. It's it's not so good on delivery. And we've seen over the last few years them not meet the targets they've set for defence personnel. Uh, but we'll have a look at what the government are announcing today. And, uh, you know, and again, we come at it in the spirit of bipartisanship. I don't think national security and our defence capability is something that the Australian people want us to bicker around. If that's what we need, that's what we need, and we need to get cracking at putting it in place. OK, so do you have doubts, given that uh, you had some doubts there about whether those numbers in the past can actually be achieved, do you have doubts that they can be in the future? Well, again, I think the announcement from what I read in the paper is an announcement between uh, 2022 and 2040. Yes, so there's well, 18 well. years yeah. uh, to deliver this, which, again, you know, some might be a bit cynical about on the eve of an election how all these announcements way off into the future are being made. But if that's what's needed, then we have to put in place the systems and processes to get it done. Mm. The government, I think, has had targets and they've had their capability reviews and different reports and they haven't been meeting those recruitment targets. So if there's this problem in the system that's going to prevent us from getting where the experts are saying we need to be, that's the issue we need to focus on. The defence spending, when Labor was last in power, dropped to record lows. Uh, it's now at 2.1% of GDP, so it has been lifted somewhat. If you are in government in a few months' time, can you commit to a higher level of defence spending that's above 2.1 GDP? Would you like to go further? Well, there's no doubt that the strategic environment we're in has changed dramatically since Labor was last in government. I don't think anyone is pretending that isn't the case. Um, now, I'll leave big announcements like that to people above my pay grade, <laughs> Pete, but, um, you know, again, we're coming to... Uh, this issue and have consistently uh, during this term of government with the spirit of bipartisanship. Okay. Uh, we don't think defence or defence spending or defence capability should be a, a political ping pong ball. That's not the way to keep Australians safe. Uh, and we would take advice about exactly what is needed. And I think there's a big difference between how much you spend and your capability. And we know there's been big problems with the big projects, the frigates, the submarines, all of those big announcements, there's been a lot more uh, problems with actually delivering and with ensuring we've got the capability we need. So defence budget is part of the uh, discussion, but actually delivering projects and capability has to be the second part okay. of the discussion. J just a final one here, Katie. This is on uh, the emergency funding, the, the, new, the latest round of emergency funding that was announced by the Prime Minister yesterday. There are quite a few LGAs in the flood-affected communities, though, that have missed out. Is that fair? Well, not from what we're hearing and from our representatives up there, Justine Elliott, Murray Watt, that have been on the ground. I mean, it just seems extraordinary that we're in the same position we were in with the bushfires and with Omicron. It's always just a little bit too late and there's something missing. And we know that communities in Ballina, the Tweed, um, Byron have been devastated as well. So it just doesn't make any sense about why these people are either left out or going to be bought in in the next few days when there's so much desperation on the ground. This is going to cost billions to recover from this and take years. It, it just seems mean-spirited that that kind of immediate um, payments aren't being made to all affected communities who've been devastated by these floods. OK, that's the Labor senator. Katie Gallagher, appreciate your time, Katie. Thank you.